Yes. So it's video uh, video day today. Uh, I think I, I took my boys to go work out this morning, and we did um, a lot of lateral training and stuff like that. They're learning to play lacrosse. They're in their about to start their second season in the fall, and they they're all actually you know kind of good at it. They had to enjoy it, and it's fun. But uh, they lack a lot of the fundamental, um, just the real athletic structured movements because gene pool that got none no gene pool from mommy no gene pool from daddy so uh i went and bought a couple of little uh bits and pieces to train with and, and help them out so we've been going every morning at 7 30 or 8 o'clock and and uh, working out for just half an hour or something like that so i got back i'm all invigorated and i guess this is just a, just like let's get some videos done so if you see all these videos come out over the next week and it's the same guy with it's unshaven and smells and has a scruffy t-shirt on. It's it all happened on Sunday or well, Saturday. Today's Saturday. So uh, this game, the uh, Paper Wars Operation Shingle, I had written about it and said, you know, uh, and posted about it sometime. I think I on Facebook somewhere or something, saying how I thought it was underrated, and um, I really think it is underrated and not talked about very much. And I'm very surprised because I'm going to pull the map out and some of the charts and stuff, but. Uh, I've now played this game two and a half times. The first time I started playing, my uh, younger son broke his arm about 12 or 13 turns into the game. And it was pretty clear that I was uh, not playing the Germans very well. I was getting my ass kicked, so it was probably good timing. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is that, um, so the second game we played, I played the Germans again. And we started the campaign game, and I was a lot, a lot more uh, conservative this time because it had been uh, about a month, uh, six weeks since we would played, and I hadn't didn't look at the rules before we started, and we kind of chatted about it a bit. I was playing with Pete, my friend here in Austin, and um, his name's Attack. Can you believe that? Pete Attack, super aggressive player, loves to attack all the time. So he was aggressive with his British and his Americans, and I was very tentative with my Germans, and he built up a cumulative pool of victory points pretty quickly. So that uh, doesn't bode well for the Germans. They have to get, uh, the Allies have to get three or four hundred points by the end of the game and I was, we were about a third of the way through and he was just, he was, I was like 200 already. There are a few cities that uh, the VPs are accumulated by acquiring uh, cities and things like that or locations that matter, right? Junctions and things and uh, some of them are worth two, some are worth one, some are worth five. Once you get five point ones, well you get five points every turn and it goes on this cumulative track. So if you go from you know generating nine points a turn to twenty nine or thirty points a turn, then game baby's over real quick. So we stopped and uh, realized that I really hadn't been playing very effectively as the Germans and so we set up a third scenario and that was pretty much the uh, an eleven turn scenario or, or thirteen turn scenario which is about what we had just played and started with that situation and went through it again and this time it was a much more even play and it was only because Pete made a mistake that uh, that I managed to uh, be gamey and because uh, I'm not above being gamey with Peter because Peter beats me all the time at everything don't tell anybody but I think he's a jerk okay it's a secret between you and me I don't know what he does I think he uh, has like some secret incense he burns or sacrifices an animal or something but he freaking beats me all the time so anything i can do to beat that guy i do it <laughs> i had this gamey opportunity to rush him and goring's uh, one of his regiments so but maybe it was a regiment it was a regiment or battalion i think it was a, a regiment and uh, an attached unit uh in and uh capture anzio and the two hexes next to it which crapped him out, he then lost seven victory points a turn. Well, didn't accumulate seven victory points a turn. So, I did that for three turns. We're playing a 13 turn scenario. Uh, I can afford, and regardless, even if it was a campaign, I probably would have stayed there. I could afford to lose those guys because the value of them, the value of owning the hexes is worth more than those two units. So, you know, and I was gonna be cut off from supply, which I indeed I was. Uh, but that's okay. And so, he, desperate move by him, he he jams an American uh, tank battalion through and captures a town that's worth five points. But I react and beat the crap out of him. So we had an awesome time. It was a lot of fun. I won a game. Yay for me. Uh, you may have, and I'm not sure it's worth trying to show you this map on the small screen, but, um, you know, the big hexes, uh, 
nice graphics. The units are all double units. You can see some there. I'm just going to touch the screen to focus. Uh, you can see their information counters. And there's two types of damage you take. You take temporary damage and you take um, permanent damage. There's the German units. The, uh, there. And uh, oh, there's no movement rates, that's just the strength rate on there. And like you said, permanent damage, temporary damage. You have this funky, uh, uh, very clever chrome, which is really all, uh, all encapsulated here in this uh, table and the, the accompanying uh, bits and pieces of information about the combat. And uh, you, you lay down tactical chits based on your, your combat ratio and DRMs, uh, die roll modifiers, uh, combat modifiers, CMs, and uh, that then drives how many additional tokens you or the defender get. You apply artillery or air, whatever the case may be, and then you get to uh, put the chits start here. You put the chits down. The attacker puts his chits down first, and if he touches this wall, this edge here, then he stops. And if he has additional chits, he then holds them in his hand. The defender puts his chits down, and you want to drive down as the defender, uh, and then kind of go from there. Uh, because there are better results here for you and uh, better results for the attacker as well in terms of the, the losses they take. Um, actually, that's not true. There are worse results down here for the attacker. There are bad results everywhere for both sides. <laughs> this is a really tough attrition-based combat system, but in a good way. And the uh, unlike, say, TCS, which is just slow, grinding, uh, attrition-based combat, this is a, a little bit more dynamic, and it's a very interesting combat model. Uh, you can go into an attack with 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, and if you haven't done your homework on the terrain or uh, um, uh, allowed for the Allies or the Germans to, uh, to know that they're going to use supply to buy artillery, you can get your ass handed to you, which I, happened to me. So that is fun. Um, that's, and that's a lot of the chrome. There's a nice tight um, uh, nexus or connection between the operations you're allowed to do in a turn, supply, and the activities that that allows to happen. And then the combat is also tied back to supply as well. So it's really a very, very interesting game mechanic overall or system overall, but it has... Uh, and it ha so it has some really uh, innovative ways, I think, of allowing you to do a certain amount of activities based on what the history was. So rather than creating special rules for, uh, or, you know, uh, Bill's, Bill's platoon can only do this and this and this and this in this period of time because this is what happened, they just change the amount of supply or the number of actions or give you more actions or take away actions uh, over the time frame that uh, a certain historical thing happened. Really cool idea. So anyway, if you don't own this, I would sneak out, don't tell anybody that you, you think you're really excited about it, and just go buy a second-hand copy of this or help, you know, spring for an actual copy of it. It's a great game. I need to give props to the designer, and I, I forgot his name. I, I read it so I would remember it, and then promptly forgot while I was crapping on let me see if I can find it in here real quick, and I'll tell you the name of the designer. Um, you say it quickly. Yes, Dave Murray, game design, game development by Jeff Boschman, graphic design by Dave Murray and Brian, with an E, Miller. And the counter artwork was also by Brian Miller. Uh, well done, guys. It's the best magazine game I've played in a long time. Uh, I think Raid and Repose from Lock and Load was probably one of the better ma magazine games I've played in a while. Uh, this is complete. It works. It's a little funky and you, you feel like you want to ask questions. You're not really sure how to go about doing things, but it's all in here, man. There's 10 or 12 pages of rules and boom, and it works. And this is how core games should be made as opposed to some of the other garbage I've played from uh, some companies. If you've been watching my videos lately, you'll know that I've been kind of pissed off at some uh, boxed games and in particular magazine games from uh, a certain company that we won't name that uh, do not work or are broken or are not finished or are incomplete or whatever you want to, whatever excuse you want to give yourself for uh, saying it's going to be okay and I'll, I'll fix it. No. 
This was done complete and right the first time. It may have taken, I don't know how long it took to make, I know nothing about it other than I bought it because I was interested in the topic and I want to take a chance on paper, paper wars. I'm sold, I uh, extend, I, I went back and changed my subscription to a full year. Good job, love it.